My name is Yupari and I'd like to invite you into my studio today to guide you along the development involved in creating this acrylic painting. And this video is going to be dedicated to those of you that enjoy working in or are interested in learning how to use acrylic paint to create a portrait painting. Let's go over the stages that are going to be involved in this painting. So the first stage is going to be the linear drawing and then after that we will do an ink drawing with the acrylic and then we will do an underpainting just getting the values in check then we will introduce color to the picture and then finally the final pass and here we have our model for the week Christine and there will be an image of her to the top left corner of your screen For the linear drawing, I'm going to take a drawing that I created in a previous video and if you want to know exactly how to draw this picture, I have a video linked in the description box below uh, where I demonstrated the entire process of drawing this linear construct. So I'm going to take this linear drawing and I'm going to use this as the foundation for the acrylic painting. And the way we're going to do that is to transfer the linear drawing from the paper to the panel that we'll be using. So here's the transfer paper that we'll be using. And I'm going to put just some tape on the top of it and then place it on top of the drawing. Now I have the tracing paper over top of the drawing. So I'm going to go in with a burnt umber uh, pastel pencil the one that I used to create the drawing. And I'm going to very carefully now uh, try and get the outline. I'm going to use still straight lines and angles like I did in the drawing video. But I'm going to be very cautious to get the exact outline. Now this is completely different uh, to how I would approach an oil painting demonstration. Uh, with acrylic, I've been trying to figure out acrylic for some time. And I know a lot of you uh, have been wanting a video on acrylic painting. Or uh, some of you are sensitive to odorless mineral spirits. Or, or you just really enjoy acrylic painting. Well, I'll say that spending your time, like an entire, say, uh, session on a drawing... Just a simple linear drawing like the one that was uh, used to create this drawing here is going to help you so much. All you have to do then is just transfer the linear drawing. And the linear drawing is a very important step involved in an acrylic painting. So now that the outlines are traced over in the drawing paper, so this is traced right on top of the drawing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this transfer paper and I'm going to turn it around. So I'm going to flip it over and then I'm going to go over these marks again with the vine charcoal. So I've just taken the transfer paper and I reversed it. So this is the back side of the transfer paper. So now with a, uh, a piece of medium vine charcoal, uh, soft vine charcoal would actually be a little bit better for this purpose, uh, but I have medium vine charcoal and it still works. So what you're going to want to do is get a fine etching of your drawing. You want to make sure to preserve this linear drawing the best you can. So just following through and getting the straight lines and angles that you worked really hard for in your drawing. Now this is, I know, completely different than how I work with oil paint. And I will tell you that uh, a lot of oil painters of the past and in the present have uh, used this type of technique also with oil paint, where they uh, do a drawing and then they very uh, carefully transfer it over onto a canvas. And it is a, it's a very good way of working in terms of getting extreme accuracy. And I thought for this video, uh, since I'm introducing a new medium, I did not want to confuse you by spending an hour talking about the drawing and then trying to get into the painting only after uh, an hour's worth of trying to show you how to draw it. So in this instance, this drawing was already demonstrated in a previous video. 
And so I encourage you to look at that video if you want to know exactly how this drawing was constructed. You really want to make sure that you dig the charcoal as much as you can into the transfer paper. You really want to press very firmly onto the transfer paper. Since acrylic paint dries very quickly, it's going to be useful to have this type of save point or uh, stamp so you can, if something goes wrong with the drawing on your acrylic, you can place your transfer paper right back on top of the dry acrylic painting and then correct the shapes as they go. But this is going to be very important, having a strong linear foundation for your acrylic drawing. I cannot emphasize that enough. And really, it's not so painful. I mean, we could just take one of the drawings that we've created in the past, which is what I did with this, and then place it right on top of the canvas, and then we can get started from there. And now we're going to take the uh, transfer drawing. We're going to flip it, and then we're going to put it on top of the uh, panel that we're going to be working on. So we're going to be working on a canvas panel. And uh, for transferring the uh, drawing, it tends to be easier if the surface that you're working on has a little bit of a texture. And also with acrylic paint, I kind of prefer the more of a canvas-like texture. And if you want to know exactly which materials I'm using, of course, all of that information will be typed in the description box below. Now I'm going to figure out where I want to uh, place the portrait onto this panel that I'm working on. So once I figure out exactly which arrangement I want uh, for the portrait to be, say more to the right, or sorry, more to the left or more to the right, that's just going to be uh, something I figure out just by looking at the edges of the panel and then just figuring out where I want to place it. So let's say somewhat about there. And now what we're going to want to do is get a pen, just a regular pen that you can find around the house or an office. And you're going to do the same kind of thing. You're going to trace right over top of the, uh, the linear drawing that you had and place a lot of pressure onto the outlines. And in doing this, the point of the pen should press down firmly onto the charcoal that's on the back side of this transfer paper. And that will, in turn, uh, stamp on the drawing. Now, you could have done this by uh, putting a, just a bunch of charcoal powder on the back of the drawing paper, and that could have worked just as well. Uh, but whenever I'm transferring a drawing, I, I like to work in this kind of way so that I can very cleanly see the lines. So after pressing over all of these outlines with the pen, now you'll see that the image is now onto the panel. So that's all it really takes to transfer a drawing. So this would be the first stage of an acrylic painting, making sure you have that strong linear drawing. However you want to create it, you could have drawn it right on top of your surface uh, if you're fairly confident with your drawing ability. Now for me, I really needed a drawing that I already had before and it was just more useful because I already had that drawing uh, in one video and it's explained. So anytime you're uh, confused at how this drawing was constructed, that video will be given to you in the link in the description below. So now that we're going to get into the acrylic paint, let's get into some of the things that we're going to need for acrylic painting. So the first thing we're going to need is a container of water. And you want to keep that very close to you. The next thing you're going to want is paper towels. And you want to keep those paper towels close to you too. You're going to want a lot of paper towel. And of course your brushes and your paints and all that. But the water and the paper towel are going to be very, very important that you have right there on hand and readily accessible to you. So we're going to start to ink in the drawing. So we're going to use uh, just burnt umber just for that. We're going to use burnt umber just for now. So I'm going to have two brushes available to me, two size one round brushes, and I'm going to keep one in the water and then one in hand. So once it's, one starts to dry, I will quickly switch to the other one. So let's bring back the uh, photo reference. So that photo reference will be right there. And so let's start to ink in the drawing. So inking in the drawing uh, basically is what it sounds like. So I'm just going to go in and uh, go over the lines yet again. 
and uh, make sure that I start with something that's easily that I can easily uh, get my hands on without being afraid. So let's start with this, just the hair. If we mess up the hair, it's not a big deal. So I'm gonna dip the brush into a little more of the water just to get it to flow just a little more, kind of like ink. If you've ever done, if you've ever done a pen and ink drawings or used Sumi ink, it's gonna be somewhat like that. So now we're gonna ink in the uh, little eyelash here and the eye. Being very careful not to lose any kind of information. Now with oil paint, I would say, don't worry. You can always come back in and correct the drawing. In acrylic, I'm gonna say, uh, that acrylic is gonna dry on you. You're gonna have a really bad day if you don't have your strong linear foundation. And that's the nature of the beast. Oil painting is a lot of fun. Acrylic painting is a lot of fun. It just takes a different approach. So I'm just covering over the most emphatic dark. So starting with this dark here, this little corner here, and this area right here. And now an advantage to uh, the acrylic drawing really fast is that you're gonna be able to do an underpainting, which is what we're gonna do next, and an overpainting, painting over it with color, you can do that pretty much in the same day. Now with oil paint, that is unheard of. That is not even, that's not even remotely possible unless you have a really fast drawing oil paint. But I've never heard of any kind of oil paint that dries that fast. So it doesn't have to be too perfect. Don't beat yourself up about it if uh, something gets a little sloppy like that. It's all right. Just get the most important bits of information from your drawing and you're good to go. So this, the paint on this brush is starting to settle. So I'm going to dip it into, I'm going to dump it into the water and get the other brush. It's always nice to have uh, brushes on hand. So I'm going to make another puddle down here and continue inking in the drawing. And I should say, I think that working on a cotton canvas or any kind of uh, textured surface with acrylic is the way to go. I've tried a few times to uh, work on a smooth panel like I do with oils, and it just doesn't work. It just, I don't know, it looks strange, like too plasticky, if that's even a word. So let's get this shape here. I think with that, we're good to go with the inking. Now, if you're gonna work on the, in this manner, two more items that you're gonna want to have readily accessible to you is a spray bottle, just containing this water, spray bottle with water, and a palette knife. So I'm working on a glass palette. So I'm gonna actually scrape off uh, the paint that's on the palette. It's already starting to dry on me. And so I scrape it off so that I can add more puddles of paint uh, without having to mix on top of paint that's already drying. So the spray bottle is pretty useful for just cleaning the palette. And when you spray the paint, uh, so like the paint that's on the palette, it actually helps it stay wet a little bit longer but you don't want to use too much of the spray, just enough to get the paint to flow just a little bit. Now the next thing you're going to want to do, the next stage is going to be creating an underpainting. And so with the underpainting, I'm going to work in monochrome first. So I'm going to work with just burnt umber and titanium white. So this other color I added is titanium white. So I'm going to go ahead and work by uh, planes. So I'm going to be using uh, a little bit of form and structure to construct 
the volume of the planes. And if you want to know how to do that, if you want to know how to uh, locate certain planes and uh, make things look dimensional uh, using oil paint, I have a video that is dedicated to uh, talking about form as I develop a portrait painting. So I'm going to go ahead and put a link in the description to the form painting. So that video I think is titled Form and Structure. But in any case, I will guide you along the process with this acrylic painting. So I'm going to be starting off with the darks. So this is the darkest area uh, in this zone. So we're going to be working in zones with acrylic painting just because it dries really fast, which again can be seen as a negative or it can be seen as a positive. So starting off in uh, this area here, this is going to be my little uh, zone. So starting off in this area, I'm going to quickly develop a sense of the plane. So this plane is darker, this plane is getting a little bit lighter. So I'm adding just a little more titanium white into the mixture. So it should be getting a little bit lighter as the uh, form starts to move closer to the light. So this area is much lighter right here where I'm applying the paint. This area is much darker. And now moving around the picture, the top here is going to be lighter still. So it's going to be a little bit lighter. And don't worry about the eyebrow. We'll go ahead and we'll place that back in once it dries. So an advantage to acrylic is that it's fast drying. It's fast drying. So you can really do a lot with it in a short amount of time. That's given you have a strong linear foundation. I cannot emphasize that enough. That linear foundation is extremely important to this process. So a little more of the white. Let's add some light over here. And then correspondingly, it's a little bit darker up here on the upper eyelid. Just a little darker. So I'm relating one plane to the corresponding plane. So this plane of the upper eyelid is much darker than this plane here on the sclera. The sclera is the white of the eye. It's getting a little bit darker over here, so a little more of the burnt umber to try and create that darker plane. I'm going to put this brush in the water. Now to a different brush. Let's create a different puddle here. So I'm working in zones. So I'm working each area piece by piece and relating each piece to the corresponding pieces surrounding it. So this area here is going to be a little bit lighter. And it's going to be even lighter still. Just a little bit more light there. And doing this underpainting will also help uh, cover the surface with a tone. So that when we go and add on the flesh tones, we can use this tone underneath to make uh, more flesh tone mixtures. So let's switch to a size 4 filbert and let's just uh, ink in this uh, large mass of value for the hair, but just in the area that we're working for now. It's just going to help me get a, an understanding of the values. So the next zone we're going to wor be working on is this little area right here. So I'm going to start off uh, with the half tones. So starting off with just a little combination, sort of in the middle between these two. So I'm going to start off right down here with these darks. So starting off from the darks, I'm then going to correspondingly work my way up the value scale. So a little bit lighter over here now, lighter here. Even a little more white now. So 
going to get lighter up here. And that is because this area is facing the light a little bit more. This area is a little bit darker. Let's add a little bit more of the burnt umber into this mixture. Make that shape a little bit darker. Now I'm going to put this brush into the water. Now with a different brush, I'm going to go in, add a little bit more of the white, and we're basically just going to fill this in now. Just filling that in. And it's going to get a little bit darker in this area here. Let's just cover this first. And let's add the dark value that exists over here. And it's just a little bit darker because this area is facing the light a little bit less. And then it's also a little bit darker over here. So with more of the white, let's cover now this area. This is going to be another zone. So this zone here is going to be lighter. Then it's going to get darker as it goes across this side. So with the palette knife, I'm just going to scrape off this paint as it's starting to settle onto the palette. So five minutes is about the point where the paint starts to dry onto the palette. And so now this piece of paper towel has a little bit of water into it. So let's just use that to clean this off. So five minutes is about the time that it'll take for that to dry on the palette. Uh, a couple minutes is the time it'll take for it to dry here. And about 20 minutes is the time that it'll take for this paint to dry on here. Now let's move to a different zone over here. So again, starting off pretty much with just the uh, a middle ground between the umber and the white. Just a nice little middle ground. So I'm going to use this on the... Uh, the lips, the upper lip. Now acrylic paint gives you a lot of control, a lot more uh, I'll say than oil paint uh, because it kind of just sticks onto the surface as soon as you place it on there. Whereas oil, pla oil paint is a little bit more slick. So you can consider that another advantage to acrylic painting. A little bit darker over here. Now I'm going to put this brush into the water. Switching to a, the other brush. Now let's go ahead and cover on top of here. So this, this brush now has a lot of water. I'm actually using the water to help me distribute a tone across the rest of the surface now. So just using the water to help distribute this tone. The water is going to help it stay wet. So let's go ahead and place in this dark now. So this is the side of the jawbone. So this is the ramus of the jaw, this little hook looking shape here. Let's put in the dark for the hair. Let's combine these two. Create a turning value here. So this is the side plane of the cheekbone. So this whole area is facing the light a little bit less. So that's why it's getting darker. And also be careful of extremely uh, hard edges. Notice how I'm kind of fluffing out this edge. 
with acrylic you kind of want to lean a little more on the soft side just be gentle with the acrylic paint it's a little more of the uh, titanium white into here just a little more titanium white let's just cover this area now now switching back to that other brush Let's go ahead and get more of the burnt umber. Let's cover this little area here. And let's just think of the calligraphy at the moment. So let's say this comes down like that. It's nice to have a variety of different uh, brush strokes, even in the underpainting stage. Let's just solidify this shape here. Gonna make it a little more sharp. Something like that. Now I'm gonna switch back to the Filbert size 4 brush. I'm gonna use what's left of the burnt umber now to cover more of this dark mass. I'm going to dilute it with a little more of the water. So let's, just, let's just take what's remaining on that. It's going to dry on us pretty soon, so let's just use it while we can. Use it or lose it, right? So I'm going to cover this. And maybe a little more water. a little more water just to get the paint to flow. Now let's get into the over painting or what I guess we can call the uh, color pass. So we're going to be using just four colors for the flesh tone. So this is actually a variation of the Zorn palette and Zorn palette is a nice uh, palette to get very basic uh, yet very uh, beautiful combinations so we're gonna use we're going to use uh, titanium white cadmium red yellow ochre and ivory black and again this is still just acrylic paint and so with the Zorn palette usually has a lead white since it's primarily used with oil paint uh, but I couldn't find anything like that so I'm using the titanium white still all right so let's create the color pass very similarly to how we created uh, the underpainting. Well, so let's start off with this dark. So ivory black and yellow ochre will give us a nice little green. See that? It's a nice kind of green. So this green would be too green for that area, so a little bit of cadmium red. And then the ivory black. Cadmium red, ivory black. So let's see how this value looks. That's about right. It's better to aim in the darker side uh, with the dark lights, such as this area here, uh, than to lose the uh, plane change. A little bit more yellow ochre to this area here. And more ivory black and cadmium red. Let's get the, uh, the eyebrow. And let's use this. Let's clean off the brush by just applying it onto the hair. And then yellow ochre, cadmium red. Titanium white. Now let's draw a little bit more into this area now. So let's create a, a color for the white of the eye, known as the sclera. So let's get something that's kind of more on the bluish side, more on the bluish side rather than the pink. Uh, so I'm using ivory black and the titanium white. 
Let's see what this value looks like. It's about right. And then the titanium white. A little bit of, uh, a little more of the ivory black, just a tad bit. Let's add that on there. Now I'm going to put this brush in the water. Switching to a clean brush, I'm now going to, uh, with a little water, there was some water on the brush, I'm just going to go ahead and mix all of this together now. We're going to make a flesh tone. So just a combination of everything that was on the palette. And I added just a little more of the cadmium red into that mixture. So let's paint in the light in this area here, then follow through up here. Just like we did with the underpainting. Just scumbling it on there. It's important to make sure that the darks look dark and the lights look light. That's how we're going to create the form. That's how we'll get the effect of the light. It's just a little bit lighter here. Let's add a little bit more the yellow ochre and the titanium white. A little more titanium white. Very soon I'm going to get into a color for the background. I'm just going to want a little tiny color change in the background. It gets a little bit darker, so cadmium red, ivory black. Bouncing back between the two. And we're going to use this dark here on the little corner of the tear duct. I know we can barely see it, but it's there. So now I'm going to add a little bit more ivory black to this mixture. And we're going to get the uh, value for the iris. Now it's not straight black. It looks like that, but it's not. I used some more colors into that mixture. And then let's add the value here for the lower eyelid. Acrylic paint gives you a lot of control. Now switching back to a size 4 filbert, I'm going to be making a value for the background. And the background is pretty blue, it's like, uh, fairly blue actually, but I'm going to use just ivory black and titanium white. Let's see if this mixture is all right for a background value. And I'm just placing a brush stroke and comparing it to the flesh tone. And something about that should work. Maybe just a little more of the titanium white. So if you want to create a sharper edge, Use more paint and place, uh, press down a little more firmly. So here I'm going to create a much sharper edge right there. And then as it gets a little closer to the hairline, I'm going to let it get a little softer by applying less pressure. And with that, we have a background color now. I'm actually going to use this to paint right over and get the shape of the nose. I'll tell you, and I will keep telling you, that with acrylic, you can do a lot in a very fast amount of time. But the one that I think the biggest disadvantage to acrylic is that if the drawing is not correct, the if the linear drawing is not as correct as you can make it or as you want to make it, uh, then the rest can get very difficult and very, uh, let's just put it this way, not fun if the drawing is not correct. So I'm going to 
just kind of scumble this value onto here. And then let's get this edge for the chin. And it's all right if we lose a little bit with that. So now I'm just gonna clean off the palette. Notice how this is starting to dry. So I'm going to use a piece of paper towel with some water. Just use it to wipe away the excess. Now we're going to move on to a different zone. So we're going to work over here again, just like we did with the underpainting. So I'm going to start off with a combination of cadmium red and ivory black to give me a kind of uh, brown or violet. Just a little more ivory black. So I'm going to use this for the dark accent of the nostril. Just about here. Don't want it to be too dark. So now yellow ochre. Going to get a lighter value with the yellow ochre. And we have this plane here now. But it does get a little bit darker closer to the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and switch brushes now and I'm going to get the background color back. See it's very helpful to have a very simple mixture for the background. Now I'm going to go ahead and make sure that this bottom of this nose is very uh, well delineated. Just want to make sure that the bottom of the nose still exists. Now switching back to the other brush we can actually use that, that gray mixture onto this yellow ochre. And I'm going to keep creating more of the planes here now. So I put the other brush into the water. Make sure you don't forget to do that because your brushes will not be in good shape you forget to put them in the water. So this plane here is a little bit darker. And let's add the lighter value now for the top. So this area is much lighter up here. Much lighter. But remember this area here is darker. It's a little darker and it's a little warmer. So I'm gonna go ahead and more ivory black. I will say, uh, at least with the paints that I'm using, the ivory black is the one that dries a little bit faster for some reason. And if you wanna know exactly which paints I'm using, of course, all of that will be typed in the description below. So I'm going to switch to the other brush. And this one has a little bit more water, so it'll help make the paint flow a little more uh, simply. So let's add a lighter plane onto here now. So let's add lighter light. Let's use a little yellow ochre into that mixture. And then let's add some of this warm color that we have there. Maybe a little bit more cadmium red. Yellow ochre. Let's get a nice light and warm color. Let's add this plane onto here. So I tend to work each zone in relation to the corresponding zones. So I see that this might still 
This might still push out a little further. So with the background brush, I'll come back in uh, later on and further solidify this edge. But for now, I want to get that color right. A little bit more titanium white. Just trying to get this shape to work. A little bit more cadmium red and yellow ochre. So I'm trying to make sure that this plane of the nose is such that this area looks like it's receiving more light, so it's lighter than this area. That's all I'm trying to do. A little bit more of this mixture here. Let's try and get this color back. Back to the cadmium red. Now I'm going to mix these two here, try and get this to read. Now we're going to work a different zone, so I'm going to use cadmium red, ivory black, and I'm trying to mix uh, a value and a color to uh, paint the upper lip. So that is too red on its own, so a little bit of titanium white and more ivory black so it'll make it a little less saturated so let's see how this color will do that's about right so it's a little bit darker than these areas and a little bit more warm comes down to about there. And if you're ever unsure of your drawing, maybe you lost part of your drawing like this area or something like that, uh, when the painting is dry, meaning in like five minutes or so, you can put the tracing paper side by side or on top of the drawing or on top of the painting and then you'll, you'll be able to get your drawing back. It's nice to have that transfer paper. It's pretty much like a save point in a video game. It's the best way I can describe it, really. It's a little bit of a darker accent here. Now switching brushes. So let's add the uh, lighter values above the mouth. So this area is a little bit lighter, maybe a little more yellow ochre and titanium white. So I'm building transparent layers of color. That is, I started off very transparent, uh, very thin with the underpainting, and I'm still painting a little bit thin. I'm going to make this a little bit warmer. I'm going to use this mixture to get uh, the chin back. So it's somewhat over here, if I can still see my uh, previous lines. Comes out to about there. It's not impossible to draw with acrylic paint. It's just really hard. So that's why I was um, telling you to do that transfer drawing first. It's really the to me, I think it's the, the best way to facilitate the acrylic painting. Otherwise, you're going to be spending a lot of time trying to figure out your linear drawing with the acrylic paint, and that's just not fun because it dries on you. And you want the drawing to be an advantage. 
You want the drying, the quick drying time to be something that you can utilize, which is what we're doing here. We started off with that underpainting and we're layering on top of it in a much faster way than if we were using uh, oil paint. So this area beneath the mouth is a little bit darker. And it's getting darker as we get closer to this area. Some more ivory black and cadmium red. This is going to get darker here. And more ivory black, cadmium red. Let's get this shape back. It comes to about there. And then here is the corner of the ramus, the jawbone, this little hook. I was talking about before. And while this is still wet, let's try and mix the transitioning plane, meaning a plane that's just a little bit lighter. So I'm trying to mix back and forth to get this transitioning plane. I dipped the brush into a little bit of water just to get this to flow again. So just trying to work these values in relation to one another. And I'm going to switch to the switch to the background brush. I'm going to very quickly try and get that background color back. And let's, create, let's create this sharper edge here now. More pressure here and a little bit softer as it gets further down here. Very gentle edge here. So I'm going to make it a little less, a little, I'm going to loosen this dark here. Don't want it to be overly dark. Meaning I'm going to try and lighten this transition a little bit, lighten it up a little bit. Just trying to get that edge to work. A bit sharper over here. A little sharper here. Now with a little more cadmium red into this mixture. Maybe cadmium, uh, cadmium red and yellow ochre. Let's try and get this plain for the chin. So let's mix the cadmium red and yellow ochre again and with the titanium white, creating a very light value. Now let's add some ivory black, yellow ochre back to the cadmium red. Now this light value should exist somewhere over here. So let's go ahead and make it a little darker on the side. Let's preserve that light. So it's going to actually get a little tiny bit darker over here. Yellow ochre, ivory black. So let's create this value here. Let's cover this whole thing now. Different brush. Let's get some of this light value and add it on. 
while the paint's still wet. It's very useful to switch back and forth between brushes. So I saved myself the time of having to clean off my other brush in order to get this value. So this light here exists because it's the top plane of the cheekbone and it's going to get more side down here so it's going to get darker. So let's add a little more ivory black into the mixture that we have down below and add a little bit of yellow ochre. And let's thin this out a little more. So I added a little bit of water into it. So now let's get these darker values. Let's cover the whole thing. Let's try to get this side plane. So we're going to have to work very quickly now. So I'm going to go in with the ivory black to try and cool it down. So we try and get this plane so that it appears to be receding in space. A little bit more yellow ochre because this area is a lot more on the greenish side. And then let's make it a little lighter using this area of the palette. Let's just make it a little lighter here. And even lighter up here. There's a plane here that's facing the light even more. So let's not forget about the dark plane of the cheekbone. So that's this plane right here. Notice how quick, quickly we can work with the acrylic paint. Darker plane right there. It gets a little bit lighter here. Switching back to the other brush, I get a more pinkish mixture for this plane right here. And let's add water to the brush. Let's get a very thin uh, mixture here. Let's just use this to cover over here now. Just covering it. the ivory black, yellow ochre, a little more cadmium red, let's get this shape back. Switching to the other brush, I'm going to get a little lighter mixture for this area here. Just want it to be a little bit lighter. So based on the way you apply the brush stroke, you can soften certain edges. So I'm trying to soften these transitions here. So that's okay if we get some little bits of paint on the side here. I'm going to cover the rest of this. So I'm going to use a different brush with the ivory black and the cadmium red, yellow ochre mixing on a different area of the palette. I'm going to go ahead and put in the dark here for the hair, and I'm going to let some of the underpainting show. This comes down to about here. This comes over here. I'm going to thin it out a little bit more. To the ivory black. 
little yellow ochre, a tad bit of cadmium red, and let's get these strands of hair. So this exists somewhere over here. Let's think about the calligraphy of the brush strokes. A little more water to thin it out. So let's see, maybe a brush stroke over here. Let's lighten it up over here and apply more pressure over here. Just thinking about the calligraphy of each individual brush stroke. So with the acrylic, you can get a nice effect uh, in terms of the way that you layer the paint. A little bit more water. Ivory black, cadmium red, a little bit of this. Just thinking of the way that the brush stroke moves around the surface, something like this. Now I'm going to use the rest of the titanium white and the ivory black. To solidify this edge here, it comes about here. So let's make this area softer, this area sharper, more pressure, less pressure to soften it here. And this is how we're composing with the paint. A little bit more ivory black into this. And a little bit more. Let's just think about the way the brush strokes look. Now the next phase of the acrylic painting uh, process is going to be the refinement. So let's just call this the finishing stage. Uh, and really all we're going to do is refine the uh, structure a little more. So this is going to be a little darker. So I'm using a smaller brushes now for the refinement. So these smaller brushes are specific for uh, watercolor or acrylic and again if you want to know exactly which materials I'm using that will be listed in the description box below so it's gonna be a little darker over here now these are gonna be very tiny things uh, the refinement so a little bit darker over here And it's going to be a little darker down here where the lower eyelash is going to be. And then there's going to be just a little glimpse of light existing right here. And for the nose, I think the only bit of refinement I'm going to do with the nose is add just another lighter plane. So I'm going to use titanium white, cadmium red, and a little bit of gray. The gray is combined from the black and the white. So just a little more light over here. Something like that. It doesn't have to be too complicated. Now for the refinement of the lips, I'm not going to do too much. I just want to uh, make that uh, the shape a little bit more concise. So I'm trying to mix the same mixture that I had, uh, which was just the cadmium red, the ivory black, and a little bit of the titanium white. 
So let's see, let's refine the shape a little more. It comes down a little further here. Just little tiny touches. And it might come even further out. But only a little bit. And then just a little touch of light. Oftentimes all you really need for a form to read is a top plane, a side plane, and then a highlight and the shadow. You can think about it as just a few values, say one, two, and three. And just a little more of a curve down here. Not much. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, lighten up the value in the background. So I still want it to be uh, pretty much a gray, like a cool gray, but maybe just, I don't know, maybe this, this kind of value, just so that it contrasts with the portrait a little more. So let's go in and uh, with a sharper edge. So this edge is going to be very sharp. And then it's going to soften. So with less pressure and a little less paint. So let's take some of the paint off. So a little less paint, I'm going to get a softer edge up here. A little bit sharper here, kind of like in the middle. And the same kind of thing here. Sharper edge on the bottom, a little bit softer near the bulb of the nose. A little lighter here. Don't want too much of a sharp edge in this area. But I do want a sharper edge down here. So I'm going to add a little more water to the brush. And dilute this a little bit and go back into the background. Just want to make sure that the shape reads at a distance. So you really want your painting with whichever medium you're using to read its best from far away say like 10 feet away or something like that. Especially with acrylic painting, we want to get close to the subject that we're painting on, so close to the panel. It's a good idea to stay as far back as you can, say about an arm's length away. So it's starting to get a little gunky again, so I'll just add a little more water. So that thins it out just a little more. So let's just cover the rest of this. Almost like she's in a cloudy day. It's cloudy outside. So I put that brush in the water container. So now I'm going to use a different brush and I'm going to go back into the hair. So ivory black and the yellow ochre will give me a kind of like a, a greenish tint. So I'm just going to kind of glaze or scumble onto the hair, just to get that kind of tint. Added a little more water to the brush, so back to the ivory black, tad bit of the cadmium red. Let's get some of these 
darker values. So it's very dark over here. And then we have light over here, so I'm going to actually leave this alone and come back in and put some dark down here. So I'm utilizing the layer that I left there. I'm going to go back into here, add a little more of a dark value. Let's place a dark here, and let's leave this to show. And darker over here. Keep in mind the calligraphy. So let's let some brush strokes show. And darker back here. So I'm going to show a little bit of the, uh, the hair wrapping around the side here. So I'm going to just, uh, well, I have to thin out the paint a little bit more. So I just want to get a, uh, just a soft edge here of, of dark value. And I want to just have a little soft transition there so you can uh, so I can look like the hair is wrapping over so you could think of this as glazing it's very thin application of paint just to get the the effect of the hair wrapping over Take some of that off. So I'm going to switch back to this little tiny brush. So I'm going to make kind of like a uh, orangey pink. I'm going to raise the light over here just a little bit and pushing the color. Just a tiny bit, so I'm kind of just scumbling the paint on there. You could think of it as glazing, but it's just very slightly scumbling. A little more light here. Just a little more light in this area. I'm going to mix up another little flesh tone just to do a touch up. So I use the uh, combination of the the red and the yellow and then I'm neutralizing it with the ivory black. Then I'm going to cool it down with the titanium white. So let's just uh, fix this little shape here. Maybe a little more cadmium red. Just a tiny bit. And just a little more ivory black. soft on this edge. And with that, we have this week's portrait painting demonstration. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope that this video helps you out, and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.